your life on earth was troubled and only you could know the pain you weren't afraid to face the devil you were no stranger to the rain go rest high on that mountain cause son your work on earth is done go to heaven a shouting Love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. We gathered round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing mm -mm. go rest high on that mountain the sun your work on earth is done go to heaven shouting Love for the Father and the Son. Well, welcome to Bella's Bargains. That was a somber way to open up, wasn't it? But that's because today is themed Thursday and today's theme is Remembrance DIYs. And that is the most beautiful song and it has very deep meaning for me. So you guys, I'm Amy, welcome. We're not going to make this intro really long. I'm just going to get right into the DIYs that I made. Thank you so much for joining me here today. FYI, I have the final Disney shirt on. Oh my gosh, you guys. Ready? Here it is. How cute is this? Look at my sleeves. Look at the collar. I didn't do anything to the bottom of this one either. Although I could have totally like tied and knotted, but I didn't. Anyway, it's the last one. How I made it, the video's at the end. All right, so uh, what? let's see. I just want to thank you guys once again for everybody that did the Subscribers Challenge this month. Just remember that this theme this month for August is back to school. It doesn't have to say back to school. It's just back to school. So whatever makes you think of back to school, do a craft. But remember, all of your spice have to come from the Dollar Tree. Listen, if this is your first time here, First of all, we open up every video with a song. And second of all, everything on this channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar, people. A dollar. All right. So I promised a while ago I would do some Remembrance DIYs. And so that's what I've done. And I want to show them to you. They're not very difficult to do. They're super easy. But they're very emotional to do for any of us. And you, some of you, I think Rita and a couple other people asked for a pet DIY. I know, Rita, you were one. Who else asked me? Was it Teresa? I'm going to find it now, you know, because I say these things and I'm like, wait, who asked, who asked, who asked? Oh, okay, Mom, Kathy, um, Teresa, and Rita. Oh, my gosh, I did get two of those right. All right, so um, where was I? The subscriber challenge. I did that, right? Oh, let's get into the DIYs. Come on, I don't have time for this. I'm dressed up, ready to go. Do you guys like the hair today? Mm -hmm. It looks really good with this shirt. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you was I had hauled this in um, one of my hauls, and it was at the, it's still at the Dollar Tree. It's what I'm showing to you. This is a guest book for like um, a service, but what I love about it is there's a spot for a photo in the front, and it says in memoriam, and there's just information that you fill out in here. But listen, there's all these blank pages, okay, which means you can write in this. So I made this little sign. I think this is really really sweet. And it says, when you think of me, write the memory down so I may live forever in these pages. Now, I didn't put a picture in here or anything, but I just want to, you could write a name here and a date, okay? A lot of these I didn't personalize because I already have quite a few things for my late husband. And so I didn't need to do a bunch more. Um, 
so I didn't personalize them all. So I just want to show you guys what they are. These actually will be available actually if somebody wants them. All right, so I love this. I came up with that saying, I think, unless I pulled it up somewhere in my vast memory, I'm not sure. But when you think of me, write the memory down and I will live forever in these pages. And this would be a memory book and people like grandkids or whatever can write a memory down. All right, that was number one. Um, let's see, number two. This was a card and there's no numbers on these. I don't know why I'm saying this. I picked up cards that were grief cards. All right, so this one's so simple, mm, but it's really good. So this was a card that I cut down, put in this frame, and then put the votive in front of it with the angel wings. What I didn't do, but what I would do if I was, you know, if I was gonna do it for, is again, write the name and the dates here so that it's about a specific person and then you can light a candle for them. These go together so well. The card said, those we love are never really lost to us for their special love lives on. It's so pretty, perfect, perfect little memoriam. Memoriam, what do we wanna say? Remembrance, a remembrance DIY. Okay, this one's kind of silly, but I'm gonna show it to you because it's really the kind of thing I would do with my grandkids. It says memory jar. These are those um, wood things, laser cuts. Anyway, so um, this is, I put post-its on top. Now, forgive me, the post-its are not from the Dollar Tree and I didn't have time to go run and get any, but you just put post-its on top of the jar lid and then people can write a memory and put it in the jar and then you do things like at Thanksgiving, you get the jar out and we pull out memories and we read and then you remember that person. I'm so trying not to cry while doing all these with you guys, sorry. It was very emotional to do these today. All right, so that's a super great idea, especially with kids. Like, you know, and even if you only pulled the memory jar out at the holidays to write memories in there, that's also good. Or just have it available at all times. I especially think with children, those are really good. Let's do a pet one really quickly because you guys did ask for a pet one. So you'll see on this, all I did was revamp a thing that I just bought at the Dollar Tree. But this is where you would put a picture of your pet. And then of course you would write your pet's name here and dates or whatever you would wanna do. I, you know, I have one I'm gonna show you that's of my late dog. Anyway, I mean, this is super cute, very sweet and so simple. And these are available right now at the Dollar Tree. It said you're potastic or something. I don't remember what it said. You'll see it in the video. <laughs> that's all I can say. Where am I gonna go to next? Um, this is a pair of my late husband's work gloves. So I did this just to show you an idea. I tied them up so I can hang them. And then I put a little thing on them and it says, your strong hands will never be forgotten. And I wrote Papa John, 1947, 2017. I'm actually gonna give this probably to one of the grandkids. Um, there's one that just, he, ugh, he's Mr. Farmer boy. And he just loved Papa John for his, cause he was a farmer. Um, okay, where have I not shown you yet? This is a candle one. So just a glass vase. The, I bought this, oh gosh, I think when I first started doing hauls, I see them every once in a while, the vases with the chalk on it. But you could just cut a piece of chalk, that, that adhesive chalk stuff and put it on here. And then I put some family photos in there. That's us with the grandkids. And then this was a family photo down there. I put some rock in there. And this is a flameless candle. And it just says, in memory, Papa John. It's just a sweet way just to, you know, ha you can have this out all the time or whatever. I really like that. These were all really simple. I tried to keep them simple. Um, the next one is this, which is really cute. I took four picture frames and um, I put pictures of Papa John in there with his grandkids. And this was a card and I put it on a little piece of wood and it said, thank, I thank God as I remember you. 2 Timothy 1, 3. Anyway, um, so sweet. This is just like a, a nice little bunch of photos um, and with a nice little thing with a remembrance in there. And I didn't put a name on here or anything, but of course you could, right? You could put the name on the bottom of this even. So lots of ideas, lots of ways that you could do it. Okay, my grandson, I'm gonna tell you a little backstory on this one. My grandson gave me this thing that he made in art class oh a couple years ago and I've always cherished it I just thought it was amazing and it was this elephant and it had like words in it I took the shape and like wrote words in it about me like there's you know kind awesome amazing cookies because we would make Christmas cookies sweet grandma um he's got artistic uh we're singing isn't singing on here <laughs> okay and I thought that was such a great idea 
So I've made something that I'm going to give to him for his, and I give them stuff all the time with Papa John on, and it's like super common. Like every Christmas they get something, like an ornament or something all in remembrance of their grandfather. So this one um, I think is really cute. It's this fabulous photo of my oldest grandson. Obviously it's a few years old. Well, John's been gone now for four years. Four, uh, yeah. So um, anyway, it's just this really cute photo. And then this is a, uh, what do you call them? You know, a picture mat. So I want him to open it up and to write down all these things that remind him of his Papa John. And then I just added the memories here. And I think this is really cute. So I'll give it to him with a really nice pen and be like, so go in there and write, you know, things that you remember about Papa John, like farmer or, you know, whatever they might be. So this is a really great idea to remember somebody with. Um, and then this is my dog one. In the video, you see, I had this up. That's my dog, dude. Greatest dog in the whole wide world. This is his dog tag. And I had it up. He died like six months after my husband. It was awful. And I just really quickly, because, you know, things were just horrible at that time. I put his, this picture, I printed it and put it into an acrylic frame. And it's just always been kind of awkward and have its ashes and all that. So I was really happy to do this today and make his like an actual, I think this is so cute. So cute. But remember, for an animal memorial, remembrance, especially like to use their little tags that were, or even my cats. Like if one of my cats dies, they have little bows with bells on it. So the bow and the bell would be on. I didn't do a cat one, guys. Sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Now I'm going to show you my favorite one. And I told you guys about this when I hauled these. I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. This is so good. You all need to copy it. It's so good. So it's two of the, 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 you know, what do they call it? <laughs> it's not frameless. It's like floating. The Two of the floating frames. So I put two together. And then, but the picture, I don't know if you guys can get the depth in this, but the picture is in the back one, right? So I just, I, you'll see in the video how I put them together. But this is a shadow box. Now, that's a John Deere tractor because that's what he drove. This is the one who absolutely adored Papa John for being a farmer. And he just loves, loved him to death. And so I gave him a shadow box and he, and it, you can get into it. Hence the ribbon, or the, the twine around it so that we can actually get into it. And I just used little dots to sort of hold it together. And he can put stuff in there in remembrance of Papa John. This is my favorite. I think it's so beautiful and so cool. Um, this one and this one I also absolutely love. And my dog one. Those are my three favorites. Which one's your favorite? Okay, guys, so that's it. That's, I did you, I did you, you, I did you. I made some remembrance DIYs for you. I really hope you like them. Um, and I wasn't too funny today, sorry. Well, it's kind of hard to do like remembrance DIYs and be funny. I'm gonna show you one more, I forgot. I didn't make this because I didn't really need to because I can just tell you. They sold these at Father's Day. This is an acrylic frame. You just put an acrylic frame on the back of it, put a picture in, but you could easily pry these letters out, turn them around, and then on the back side, you put it this way, and you'd have to turn letters around, and then you could write something. You could also probably sand the, my Forever Hero, but you can leave my Forever Hero if that's what you'd like. So there's another idea. I didn't do it because it just was super easy to tell you. All right, I think that's it. I hope you guys like those. I really hope you like them. Thank you so much. Don't forget my t-shirt at the end. I really, this is my favorite, I think. This one is my favorite. If you remember, if you go back, there, there's the lines in here because I bleached the center part and then put the green on and then added all the Mickeys. See my Mickeys? Oh, wait. Did you guys know there's Mickeys in the back too? I put Mickeys in the back too. And, and my guy has a matching one. Wait, let me just show you. Well, yeah. So he's got a matching one for Disney. But uh, how cute is that? All right, guys. Enjoy the video. Have a great day, great week, a great life. I will see you back here tomorrow for Foodie Friday. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. And in this moment, at the end of the video, give me a heart if there's somebody that you thought of while looking at these remembrance things and there's somebody that you might make one of these for. Give me a heart at the end. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Bella's besties. I'll see you tomorrow for Foodie Friday.
this is going to be a really cool one, I think. This is a book, and it says a guest book for funerals and memorial services. Um, this is still at the Dollar Tree. I just saw another one the other day. But even if you couldn't find it at the Dollar Tree, you could make something like this. It would be fairly simple to get a journal. And oh, that's not going to come off, is it? To get a journal and do something like this. All you would have to do is to include... Um, no, I'm going to get that off later. <laughs> All you'd have to do is to put a little picture frame next to what I'm gonna do. The idea is this. This is a guest book, it says for a funeral, but it doesn't have to be. I wanna show you a few things in the book that um, I, it's really beautiful. You know, you put the name and the date in memoriam. There's beautiful quotes in it. This one is, An unable are the love to die for love is immortality. How beautiful is that? Then you have a life record the final resting place, services, all that. But if you, biographical notes, if you didn't want to fill in any of that, except maybe, you know, the name of who this is about, you can put pages over this or stickers over things um, and just put pictures in of the person. You could just put pictures in, okay? Basically, what I want this book to be is a memory book. So I'm going to take this frame and I'm going to write... On, I have paper from my paper stack thing that I've purchased at Dollar Tree. And I wish this one would do the whole thing, but it won't. I need to send it. So This is the only one that fits. So that's fine. But what I'm going to write is, when you think of me, write the memory down so, so I may live forever in these pages. Then put that with this book somewhere in your house with a pen. And if anybody ever thinks of your loved one, they can write it down. So let's get started. First, I opened up that frame and cut a piece of paper and decided that I could just put a band in the middle for writing the words on. I wrote it down in pencil first, then wrote it and with the marker. I started with a gold that didn't work, it was too thick, and then just did it with a black, and then tried to erase my lines um, right there, but it really messed up the paper. So I glued it down, and then I got some of the gold rub-ons because I thought it would be nice touch to have them in the corner there. This did not work at all. I have I have not had good luck with these rub-ons, but this was a textured paper and I think that's why. In the end, I gave up and grabbed the tissue paper that Dawn sent me and covered the piece of paper and got a new piece for the middle, wrote it out freehand, and then added a sticker, which gave this a very feminine flair, by the way, um, which I really liked. And then put it next to the book, and and that was it. And I thought this came out really pretty. Now, to personalize it, you could put the name at the bottom of that frame. All right, this one is fairly simple. So I have an eight by 10 frame. A photo mat. This, um, this is a Heidi swap. Got this oh, a few months back. Memories and a picture. And this is something that I would make to give to my grandson. It's inspired by him actually. This whole idea. And after I put it together, then he can write things like um, John Deere tractor or um, I don't know tubing. He could write down all the things that remind him of his Papa John as a little memoriam to his Papa. This is just so easy. Obviously, I'm going to take the mat out, put the memories on there, put the picture frame in there, put it all back together, and then give it to him, and he can write down all those special words. All right, for this one, I have a picture frame. It's four by four. I have this like angel wings candle votive, little votive holder. And then this is a card, but the saying is so nice. Those we love are never really lost to us for their special love lives on. So I thought how nice to frame this, put the candle in front of it, and then you could write the loved one's name on there and maybe the dates. So this was so easy.
Just cut the card in, put it back in, and the project is done. For this one, I'm going to make take four photo frames, put them together to like make like a window. I'm going to use this to make a wreath. I'm going to cut this out. This says, um, I think God is I remember you and then put some pictures in it and a hanger and that will be it. I just opened up all the frames and I put a picture inside of them and then glued them together on the back with popsicle sticks. Uh, and I only used hot glue, but you could use the stronger glue if you wanted to. I was, anyway, just trying to get this really done for you guys. So there's the popsicle sticks. <laughs> and then um, on the front, I took that wreath and I just made it into a wreath, just sort of wound it within itself. Then I took a one of the chalkboard signs and I glued on that card and then just did a lot of it took a lot of sanding because there was curves on this but I really like how when you sand the edges how that looks it looked really cool in the end and then once I was done with that I put the ribbon to hold that wreath on glued that on the back glued the sign in the middle and I just pulled out parts of the wreath to, that would hold that and then glued it on there and that was it This one's super easy. I have a metal tag. I have a pair of my late husband's work gloves. So you could do this with numerous things. But I'm going to twine them together and then hang them up and put a tag on it that would have his name and date. Just as a reminder. So this is one of those ones that changed after I started it. So I wound the tied them and it just didn't look right. They made the gloves look funny. So I undid that, hit my camera, and then um, glued it in. He had cut out the loops, so I couldn't just tie it to a loop. Normally a glove would have a loop in there. But I just made a knot in the rope and glued it on the inside. And then I added a tag on it after I got that all done. One of the galvanized tags. And wrote on that, I used a Sharpie, which worked great. You can erase it using a Mr. Clean, FYI. But I took the Sharpie and I wrote, your strong hands will never be forgotten, and Papa John, and yeah. So again, this is with the Sharpie, you guys. Oh, I used a piece of twine to tie it on, um, and I just tied it on to the string of the, the one that it's hanging off of, the front one there, I guess it would be. And then wrote the words, your strong hands will never be forgotten, Papa John. Anyway, I really like this. I'm going to give it to one of the grandsons. All right, so this one is, I have these two. They're the, the floating frames where you put a picture inside which I'm going to do, and this is um, my late husband and my grandson. This was when he was ill, so I'll try to get some last photos. But I'm gonna make this a shadow box, and then he can put stuff in it that reminds him of Papa John inside. So first, I'm gonna take it all apart and clean off all the tape that they have on these and whatnot, so come back when it's all cleaned up to do this. I cleaned it all up and then I put this picture in, by the way, backwards on the back of the farthest one because I remember I put back to back. And then I tried to put it together and tie it, but it didn't work. So I used sticky dots and tied it with the twine because that way he can get in to put the stuff inside of there. And there's a little John Deere tractor in there because of course Papa John was a farmer and Zane absolutely loves his, he loved farming and everything about it. I tried to put this tag on there. I don't think it looked right. It's an option, but in the end, I left it 
just like that. I love this one. This one I'm going to use on these faces with the chalk label on it. Some River Rock, a LED pillar candle, flameless, a couple of family photos, and um, a sticker or two. I'm not sure which sticker yet. So basically, I'm going to make a candle holder that has some family folders in it, and then I'll write um, in memory of on here. So this one gave me a little bit of trouble because I couldn't get the photos to go in there quite right. In the end, um, I just kept finagling and finagling and finagling and um, I didn't trim down the photos. Maybe that would have helped if I trimmed a little bit off. But I get the photos down in there and put some river rock and it still doesn't quite work. But <laughs> it looks good now. And then I wrote um, In Memory of Papa John. And put some twine uh, around the top of it. Put some rocks in to flame this candle. And this is just a really beautiful piece that you can have up all year round. And the photos behind the glass look amazing. Okay, this is my dog. And I had this photo made after I lost him. It says a paw print on our hearts forever. September 8th, 2007 to March 10th, 2018. This was dude. He was the best dog. The last time I had him at the beach. So I've had it just in this awful acrylic frame. And um, so I thought, well, today's the perfect day to upscale my memory of dude. And I have his ashes near it and a little statue of... Uh, miniature schnauzer like him next to it also but um they these are his dog tags and so i want to <laughs> hello my name is dude my mommy is amy oh oh i'm gonna cry <laughs> so let's give dude's picture a proper little memorial framing here so i just scraped those words off of it the coloring on this was perfect for a beach photo um i just trimmed it down it removed the saying that said your paw prints leave your paw prints on my heart forever but that was okay and then i just did a twine and put his dog tags i think this is so beautiful and perfect to remember dude by all right this is um a fairly new decor piece that they have right now at the dollar tree and I'm just going to turn this into a little way to do a memorial thing for your dog. I don't think it really looks like a cat. But, yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm going to try and get that off. But... Anyway, um, I'm gonna tear up the paper, yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> We're gonna, it's all right. We don't really need this part right there. Anyway, okay. So I'm gonna take some chalkboard paper. I'm gonna cover up the stay positive parts. I'm gonna do a little frame thing here for a picture. And then this could be the dog's name and, you know, dates or whatever they might be. Super easy. I just took the chalk paper and cut it out. I used chalk to mark it so I knew the size. Put that on there. And then I put a square to cover up the hole in the middle. Glued down our um, clothespin and that was it. This is ready to go. So I have 
One of the laser cut craft words says memory. I soaked it in water um, so that I only had half because it'd be easier to, it's a little pliable and I can sort of bend it on the, on the jar. So I'm gonna write memory jar. I'm gonna put jar underneath it. So, um, and I'm probably gonna use Mod Podge to put this on. I'm actually gonna write jar first because I'm gonna use a um, glass marker and it'll probably run into the memory. And then this is a memory jar where you make notes and you put them into the jar. Memories of your so I wrote jar with a glass marker, just kept going over it. When you use these glass markers, you do have to go over them quite a few times. Then Mod Podge down memory. Then I got some sticky notes to put on, oh, I wound some twine around the lid. Put sticky notes on the top and this one is done. So this is the last Disney shirt that I'm gonna restyle. Um, my guy has a matching one, and this one is fairly easy. I'm going to, first of all, cut the collar out. So I wanna get it fairly flat and, there we go. I wanna make sure that this is all, you don't really wanna have any wrinkles in it when you cut because then it's gonna mess up your cut. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna go um, on the. I'm gonna follow the the collar on the front part, and you always start just a little bit out so that you don't end up with like a V here. So you kind of start and taper in to follow that. I hope that makes sense. All right, looks pretty even when I cut off, it's great. Now I am going to cut, um, I'm gonna, I have a mark on my thing and I think that's probably a little too deep. So I'm gonna put another mark on my scissor. I should get my magic eraser off and get that out of there, but I'm not going to. So I'm gonna go about that deep with my cut. And I'm going to start by cutting the shoulders open. And then I'm going to just start cutting like this. You can see I'm just pretty much trying to keep my distancing about the same. As I'm nearing the middle of the shirt, notice that my cut was going straight now. So I'm sort of cutting and following the curve with the angle of the scissors. One, two, 
two, three, four, five, six. I should be fine because I'm going to have two for each cut. Babbling here as I do this. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this collar and I'm going to start basically in the center here, which should be about, yeah, about here. And I'm going to just pull on these a little bit and I'm going to knot these two together. Oh, I probably should have cut a little bit deeper. That's okay. We're going to get this to work. So I'm just doing a knot. And then I'm going to move on to the next two, pull on them, and then knot. Oopsie. A little tedious. I probably should have cut them just a little bit longer, but I didn't want a huge tail at the end, so it's going to take a little more effort, but I won't have that huge tail. Then I'm going to go back to this side and not, I'm going to go every other around. And then I go back to this side. And we're just going to do that wrapping these two in knots, alternating which side we tie the next two on until we get all the way around to the back. And we're going to do this all the way around. Okay. So we're just going to keep flopping sides and you take the next two on this side and tie these together. And go back over here. And we're just gonna go all the way around till this is done. All right, so there, I've done that. And see, it just sort of gives, it's a cute little gathered look on the neck. And now I'm just gonna go over to the sleeves and do just the simplest thing. I'm gonna find the middle and I'm going to just cut this. Um, let's see, I'll use that marker for this one just. and then sort of stretch it if I can. And I'm gonna knot this together. So I'm not doing anything except cutting it and knotting. See that? Well, I've knotted my sleeve and I've knotted my collar. Then I'm gonna go over to this side and do the same thing. And about there. And then this shirt is gonna be done. Well, I assume. I'll go put it on and make sure it's done, but I think it's done. So there you go. And then I have like, see how I just gave, made it look way more feminine? I give it a little poof on the sleeve by doing this and it just gives it a nice, this this particular shirt had this gray, it was a good shirt, but anyway, I don't think it'll matter. Anyway, look how cute that is. So that was so easy. Anybody can do that.